Here is another video that was uh, semi-inspired, almost inspired by a viewer who I found out just a few minutes ago uh, was asking a different question. But since I thought it would be a good idea for a video, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to try and provide you with cantilever information for a floor with open web floor joist. And some of the information in here will be my own creation and others will be what the manufacturers offer and recommend. So with that said, always check with the floor truss manufacturer for the correct way to use their products. And one of those methods might be something like this, where we have a cantilever deck that is the same height as the existing floor. And I will have a support block underneath each one of the joists. And we will go with the standard one third sticking out and two thirds going back. However, your local engineers might require one quarter sticking out, three quarters sticking back for the floor joists. And I do have more information on that at our website. So my take on this is that the floor joist manufacturers might be asking for you to just simply nail either construction standard lumber like we have here, maybe a two by 12 or other products that that might work for this also like truss joist. Now it's probably going to be more common to drop the cantilevered balcony at least an inch and a half, two inches. And if that's the case, then your balcony might look something like this. And it might require shaped blocks or even a shaped board. You could have a board like this one here that would be continuous. And then you would simply notch it over the floor joist. And again, we have the same situation as we did before except we will not be nailing into the top cords here. And I would definitely check with the manufacturer for a nailing schedule because I'm not 100% sure how many nails you could put into any of the floor trusses without creating a problem because you're going to be nailing into the webbing here. You're going to be nailing into these boards here and I'm not 100% sure how that's going to affect the trusses. And another thing you might consider doing would be to block the end of it. However, you could see here where we're not going to get much nailing on either side with a block like this. However, you might be able to extend the length of the joist for the cantilever to where it falls into a bay where you can use a solid piece of lumber like we have here and then butt it up against the bottom of the top cords. And if you're going to do something like this, you might consider extending the length of this structural support board. However, I do not know if it's going to be needed. And since we are coming down two inches, we have an inch and a half top cord, a half inch space here. And of course, you wouldn't have this situation if you were only coming down an inch and a half or if the top cords were going to be wider. And of course, on this side, I am simply stopping this structural support board at the end of the top cord here and not extending it. And I also installed a double joist on each side to provide you with an example of what that might look like. And again, the extended board here, not extended over here. And of course, an upper view of the cantilever deck. And for those of you who are not familiar with the cantilever I was talking about, you can usually extend out a quarter of the length of the cantilever. For example, if I was going to extend out three feet, then I would come out three feet here and then go back into the floor nine feet. And if you had a situation where the end of the deck this measurement here from here to here needed to be a little bit longer or even a little bit smaller, then you might be able to do something like this. And of course, this would require you to extend the structural board back here and install another block underneath your additional joist along with a backing block here. And let's go ahead and take another look at the backing block here where we notched it around this two by four. And you would need that block for any exterior work like your siding or stucco. And even though I'm using eight nails here, the engineer or the manufacturer might require more or a different setup along with the framing anchor that I'm using here to create a stronger structural connection. So if you missed it earlier, my biggest concern is going to be the nailing because I would be concerned with over nailing some of the lumber that is used for the open floor joist 
that could somehow split and force some of these components to separate or even collapse. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of methods that might or might not work if we're going to be extending the cantilever in the opposite direction or perpendicular to our joist. And even though I've seen a couple of suggested methods, I want to show you how these methods probably aren't going to work unless the open web truss joists were modified somehow to make it work. But you can see here where we're not going to be able to get a 16 inch on center layout. And in this drawing, we only have one joist that is going to go through the webbing. And I'm not about to suggest you couldn't make this work somehow. However, I am going to suggest that you can see the problems with this if you're going to use this method. And again, I've seen this on quite a few examples on the internet. So how do we fix it? I would suggest changing the direction of the joist. And that can be done with something like this, using a support or girder truss and then some hangers and then redoing the cantilever using similar methods as I've already showed you in the other example. Now I do want to point out that if you are going to do something like this over a window or door opening, that it might require a larger header and that larger header might require double trimmers or even a 4x4 or 4x6 post on each side. So keep that in mind if you are going to do something like this without an engineer or any plans provided by someone who knows what they're doing. And even though this isn't something that I've seen before, you might consider adding a support block on the top that is going to go underneath the sheathing to help with the upward force that's going to be created when you're standing out here or you have a load out here. So for example, if I have a load pushing down out here, I have a large piece of furniture, a heavy barbecue, or even a few people, then I'm going to end up with pressure going up on this side of the joist. And if that's the case, a block like this might help or even a block that might be underneath a wall that is going to be perpendicular to the joist and sitting on top of the cantilevered section. And again, these are just things I'm throwing out there that might or might not work. However, it seems like a pretty good idea. Now, another thing I'd like to point out is that these joists might need to be angled because we usually need a slope of about a quarter of an inch per foot on an exterior deck like this. And if that's the case, then the joist will need to be angled. And to create that, we might need to raise this end of the joist and even reshape it to where it won't be in the way if it's going to be protruding above the floor joist, top of the joist. Or you can shape the end of the joist here. And I do have other videos on that. I would definitely recommend going to our website and checking out some of the balcony framing videos. And the last thing I would like to point out is that you can always have the truss manufacturer provide you with a structural floor framing system that should have all of the components you need to build a floor for your particular project and will probably provide you with the best method possible to build something like this. Now, I don't work for a company. I am not endorsing a company. I do not endorse anybody currently. And understand that a lot of people watching this video are probably just going to go down to their local lumber yard and purchase their own 20 or 30 foot open web floor joist and then use one of these examples in the video to make it work. And I'm not about to suggest that any of these methods will work for your particular project. And for the most part, the information in these videos has been gathered from other projects I've seen and from information I found on the internet.